thank you everyone uh, for joining. This is Bob and I's first video conference. Just a sign that uh, we're getting into the modern age, Bob. Um, it took us long enough. So we're going from the old school audio uh, to give you video here uh, using Zoom, which someone just uh, texted me on the chat here just saying, should we buy some uh, Zoom stock here? Um, might not be a bad idea, but the stock's already up huge. So I think it's already pricing in that a lot of businesses right now are probably running off of Zoom, which is great technology, by the way. So everyone enjoys this. Um, but you know, thanks everyone for getting on the video chat tonight or the Zoom chat tonight. You know, obviously we're seeing some exceptional volatility that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. So Bob and I thought it'd be a great time to just communicate with you directly. You know, a lot of the people that are on the call tonight are our clients um, and friends that uh, you know we offered out to to do this conference to just to give us to give you our I guess viewpoint of what's going on, where things are going from here. And if you're a client right now, what we're thinking in terms of port strategy and really how to manage uh, the volatility that we're, per, you know, we're, we're in at the moment. So having said that, Bob, I know this isn't your first rodeo. Um, so, you know, how does this volatility really stack up to some of the volatility we've seen in the past? And I mean, 1987, I remember you were in Hawaii on vacation when we had, you know, the great no. crash of 87 and, you know, how would you stack this up to what we've seen uh, or what you've seen in the past? Well, Hawaii was nice. Um, I remember that, but um, you know, it's not just, I've been through it before, right? We've all been through this before. We've had, you know, some very scary volatile markets, you know, over the last uh, 45 years. I mean, even since we started paying capital management, it came right on the heels of a very scary, volatile market, which was, you know, 2008, but it just put this coronavirus correction, um, I think in perspective, you know, we're, we're down a little over under 30%. So have we seen that before, you know, cause down 30% is, is two times the annual drawdown, what you historically get, you normally get, but you know, 1987, we had a, a two day 35% decline. You know, one of it was in one day, 22%. So that was, that was pretty shocking. Um, but you also had a decline in 2001 of 30%, 2002 of 30%. But, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when we started paying capital management, we had a 50% decline in 2008. Yeah, it's actually funny. We started paying capital management, what I would call the belly of the beast. Um, yeah. you know, we literally started our firm up in July of 2008. And by September, October, Merrill Lynch went out of business. That's where I was working. And I always like to joke. Um, clearly, they went out of business because I left there, but it might have had something to do with Obviously. the financial crisis, Bob, that we were going through at that time. No, it sure did. And that's, that's the difference. This is a healthcare crisis. It really is. Uh, it's not a financial crisis. So, you know, there is a, a valley we have to go through to get to the other side. But uh, I think the one thing that was shocking about this, why I think it was important to, to talk to everyone tonight, it was just the velocity of this decline. I mean, it was the fastest transition from an all-time record high. Now, believe that or not, February 19th, we're at an all-time record high on the S&P 500, and boom, 16 trading days, we're in a bear market. So unlike 2008, where we had a little bit of forewarning, right? The markets were slowing down. Um, we, we saw some negative headwinds. You know, it was a, um, you know, there, was, there were some indications that, you know, there was something coming. And this came out of nowhere. So, you know, it's a... Um, you know, the, the, it's an extraordinary level of volatility, but just like the other declines, right? All the other volatile drops. Uh, Rye, can you just go through history in your mind and just tell me which one was permanent? Huh. Um, right, none of them were permanent. And if you go back, and I know you and I put some of these numbers together today, just talk about on the call. But just to put in perspective, so we're down almost 30% in 16 trading days. So that is just such a short period of time. If you think about it, we're not even a month away, you know, month from that peak on the 19th or two days away from the peak on February 19th. Um, that's such a short time. But if you go back in history, go back to 1987, Bob, that crash last went down 33.5%. Um, and at that point, the Dow was down to 1600. Now yeah. we know the Dow's come down a lot, but remember the Dow today trades over 20,000. Um, so Clearly, you know, the markets are a lot higher today they were in 1987. And then 2000, that's when I got in the business, the tech bubble burst. Um, from peak to trough, you had a 49% uh, correction, excuse me. 
And at the bottom, the, the Dow was at 7,000, again, way lower than we are today. And then 2008, which doesn't really feel that long ago, uh, from peak to trough, you went down 56%. I remember the day that the S&P went to 666, which was you know, kind of a dynamic, uh, demonic number uh, that we yeah. had. Um, but at that point, the Dow was trading at 6,000. So clearly, anytime you've had a big tumultuous sell-off like this, they're usually fast, they're very emotional, but if you look back retrospectively, they've always been our best buying opportunities in history 100% of the time. Yeah, I mean, if you go back and look at, uh, you know, 6,000 on the Dow, and, you know, of course, the market was up over 1,000 points today because I think somebody leaked it to the media, right? Some of your friends in the media found out that you and I were doing a call tonight. So I think that's why <laughs> the market went up. But, you know, even at 21,000, <clears throat> 21, I mean, think about that relative to 6,000. Now, why can't it go down to 6,000? Right. Well, that's the thing. Over time, every year that, you know, the company's earnings are accrued, dividends are higher. I mean, I always kid Ryan when the, when the Dow goes down. We had that big drop the other day. I said, you know, in seven days, we'll be at zero and we'll be able to buy the collective capital of the country, you know, for nothing. We'll get, you know, all of Apple. We'll get every car and every car lot in the country for nothing. We'll get every office building, every piece of real estate. And on top of that, you know, we'll get a 55 percent dividend. If, you know, I mean, you're not going to get yield of 55%. So there is, you know, underlying value is why the market never goes back down to where it was on the last correction. So that's why when you look at all these corrections, why we wanted to talk about that <clears throat> and put it in perspective, you know, a lot of people panicked when the market was 1600, right? Did they ever get back in? Well, I think that's the hard part because I think, you know, some of the rationale I've heard in the last couple of days and, you know, we listen to a lot of people and a lot of opinions about things. And all of a sudden, when the market goes down, everyone's an economist now, <laughs> which is yeah. amazing to me, is, you know, the thought is, well, why not just get out and let me wait for the market to go lower and then I'll get back in. Um, but I think yeah. the reality of it is, first off, we have no idea how low this can go. And anyone who tells you that they think they know, don't walk away, run away. Um, there's just no way to understand when the economy is going to actually get back on firm footing. But, you know, with all reasonable expectations, probably sooner than later, you know, at some point this will just dissipate and the economy is going to turn on again. Um, and at some point the market is going to rally. But the thing you have to remember is with markets is they tend to be ahead of what's going on. So the news could get worse, but the market could have already rallied. And since we don't know when that point's going to be, it's very dangerous to sit in cash here, earning nothing, by the way. And we'll talk about dividends tonight as well. Um, and hoping you're going to figure out the next best place to get in because we found historically, because we've been through a couple of these, it's not getting out that's hard, but getting back in and at the, and even at a level that's reasonable is impossible to do. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we did. We had a lot of people we, uh, we took out of the market in 2008. Um, and when it was 2009, the buying opportunity of a generation, people fought us. They said, no, you're right. Things are really bad now. Well, that's the thing. News doesn't get better before the market. The market gets better before the news. So when you look at uh, what's happening, the reason that happens is because the governments around the world provide a lot of stimulus. I mean, last Sunday, Federal Reserve, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, threw this kitchen sink at the market. And the reaction was on Monday, scared the crap out of everybody, right? So they're like, oh my God, thing must be really bad. Well, you know, if you think about it, we really don't need the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates um, you know, because of it's, we need people to get healthier. And once we start to see, you know, less cases and people getting healthier, that's all going to be a, a big benefit. But all that money that's being created, all those low interest rates, guess where they're going to find their way? They're going to find their way into the stock market when people feel more comfortable. Now, what we probably will see on top of that, and that's happening all over the world, by the way, you know, Bank of England cut their rates, Federal Reserve cut their rates, but governments are providing fiscal stimulus. Right. You saw it in Germany. Right. Why just happened in Germany. Um, yeah. Yep. Good. No, I so, said, yeah, no, they basically, um, as we say, they, they, they shot the bazooka at the problem. You know, any company in Germany that's having a problem because of the virus with their business, I mean, literally are getting money from the government. So we think the same thing's going to happen here in the U.S. You're going to get some sort of fiscal stimulus where, you know, maybe there's going to be a suspension of payroll taxes. Uh, you're going to be able to get your unemployment quicker. So there's going to be a lot of stimulus put in there. Because we think that the U.S. is absolutely going to follow suit with what the rest of the world's doing. In fact, Europe uh, is actually ahead of us on that right now, which is hard to believe. So, you know, that, that is definitely starting to happen. And to your point, Bob, you know, we see at some point that's going to have a major effect on the economy and the positive, and especially when we turn things back on, 
um, you, you could see a, a gigantic melt up at some point here. Unfortunately, we just don't know exactly when that's going to be. Yeah, you know, Ryan, you know how I, I used to be a lawn guy? Um, you oh. know, and I really cared a lot about my lawn. <clears throat> well, not really. I used to I hire you, I thought you paid somebody to do the lawn. I don't think yeah, I ever well, saw you once do the lawn for the record. I think, you know, I think this is really you know, the best. Not a lawn guy. That's true. <laughs> well, but I, I did like to have a green lawn. But if you think about your lawn, right, if you have a bad patch on the lawn, something's dying. So what do you do? You over fertilize it. You know, you, you, you actually you put more water on it. But unfortunately, the way the government applies help, whether it's, you know, it's from the Federal Reserve or it's, you know, fiscal stimulus from the government, is it's like they have a giant manure spreader and they have to spread it all over the lawn, you know, to fix that one little spot that's doing poorly. So what happens is the, poor, the spot on your lawn recovers, but the rest of your lawn grows like it's on steroids. And so what'll happen, you know, on the other side of this is that you'll see all that stimulus, you know, really jazz up the economy, push up stock prices and everything else. We just don't know when that's gonna happen, okay? Yeah. So we think of 2020, you know, as the year of the virus, right? You think of all the negative things that are going to happen. We're going to have a bad GDP report, a bad earnings reports. Well, you know, you got to think of 2021. It's going to be a year of recovery. But stock markets are forward-looking. They don't wait for the recovery. They anticipate it. So we got to start being forward-looking in the way we view our portfolio. Yeah, and to talk a little bit about the portfolio and strategically what we're thinking right now, um, you know, we really have a great opportunity right now because what's happened here is the markets come way down. You don't need me to tell you that. But on the other side of the equation, you know, the bond portfolio has held up really, really well. Um, this year, year to date, you know, your bond portfolio is maybe flat to up a little bit, but we're trading at some of the all-time highs on our bond portfolio, I and mean, maybe a little bit off of the highs right now based on price action in the last week. But the point is, with interest rates so low right now, the yields on our bond portfolios aren't as good as they used to be because the prices are so high, and be between now and then they actually mature those bonds, your, your yield on these things is getting really, really low. And real, realistically for retirement, everyone's gonna need income. And our bond portfolio is not gonna carry us through. So with the market down now, the one silver lining is the yields have gone up significantly. And that just means the income on the stocks that we buy right now are gonna be at some of the highest levels that Bob and I have ever seen. We're actually able to sell your bonds and buy stocks that have higher yields than your bond portfolio. And I can tell you that's never happened in my career. So, you know, we don't know when the market's going to recover again, but you're going to get paid really, really well right now for any money we put into the market or dollar cost average, just because the, you know, the irony of all this is with all the fear of the market is it's the most cash rich place you can possibly put your money right now. Well, let me just remind everybody, Rye, we're still, you know, we're not, we're not telling everybody to sell all their bonds and buy stocks. Okay. We're still the, you know, the very conservative uh, people that we are and believe in diversification, but you know, and I think when you have these types of um, dislocations in the market, you have this, this high volatility, the urge is to avoid risk. Well, your portfolio has already been adjusted for risk. If you were 60-40 allocation at 60% stocks and 40% bonds, well, because of the recent decline, you're now 50% stocks and 50% bonds. So all we're, all we're suggesting is that over, you know, the next couple of months, couple of weeks, couple of months, that we start to dollar cost average into the equity market with, you know, rebalancing your bond portfolio, taking the interest, taking some gains and reinvesting the dividends that are going to be paid at the end of this month. Yeah, exactly right. So I, I think the other thing, just a caveat on that as well is because we don't know when the bottom's going to be and we can absolutely see this market go lower from here. And there's a good chance that could happen. But the point is, you know, we always want to be proactive with our strategy, not reactive. And that's why we have bonds to begin with. You know, Bob and I, believe it or not, could not predict at the beginning of the year that there was going to be a virus that was going to get spread around the world and bring you know, world economies to a screeching halt only two months into the year. I know it's hard to believe, but we didn't predict that ahead of time. But we always have that bond position in your portfolios if you're a client of ours, because um, we know you always expect the unexpected. And just like no one predicted the markets were going to do this, um, yet right now you got to be really careful because there's a lot of people out there that are going to tell you they know the market's going to go 30% lower. Uh, it's going to go up from here. No one really knows, but the point is, you know, going back to what Bob just said, is we're going to dollar cost average and the market goes a little lower, we'll add a little more in, but we're going to keep our big war chest of bonds in place. Um, but there's no reason not to take some profits here on the bonds where we're getting very little yield and starting to put that into the cash, cash flow rich stock market and buying some of these big blue chip companies right now that are on sale. And if you think back, you know, if you think out another three to five years, I have to think 
know, the earnings growth on these companies is going to be phenomenal. So, you know, this is a great chance, great opportunity for us to rebalance the portfolios, generate more income for you. And again, get better value in terms of where the market is today versus where it was only two months ago, significantly lower. Yeah, and we're going to do that, you know, gradually over the course of the next couple of weeks, couple of months. And, you know, here's the other thing. And, and as, as you all know, I've been doing this for 46 years. I've never had any one of you or anybody I've ever met who didn't tell me, boy, I just wish we could get a great buying opportunity. But, you know, every time they present themselves, whether it was 87 or 2000 or 2008 or 2011 or even, you know, a year ago, Christmas, right? We had uh, on Christmas Eve, we had the market down 20% over a three month period. Now, a lot of you don't remember that, but I do because I was sitting by the phone on Christmas Eve talking to clients for the first time in my life. Um, and, you know, I didn't know that the next day the market was going to bottom and go up 35%. But, you know, whenever we are presented with these buying opportunities, you know, as human beings, we say, well, I wanted a buying opportunity, but I didn't want one where I'm so scared I can't do anything with it, <laughs> right? So I think we all really want to, you know, think about it a little bit. But, you know, Ryan says that to me all the time. He says, you don't get good prices in investing with good news, right? Good pricing comes with scary news, scary headlines. And I think the media is doing a really good job of scaring every one of us. Um, so I think that that's one of the things we just all want to recognize that yeah, we may not be at a bottom, but we're pretty close and there's good value here and we're not going to be all in, but you know, we want to take advantage of it and not miss this opportunity. Yeah, no, I think, I think well said. Um, so you know, you're going to hear from your advisors over the next step, which you probably already have. I know everybody's been calling uh, all of you and just, you know, keeping you posted what's going on. Uh, we're doing a conference call literally twice a day with the team because everyone's working remotely now. Uh, with regards to just strategy, where we are, what we're doing, but you know, like we've always done, and this is Bob. Was this your 45th year in the business? Just get 46th. started. 46th and premature. Yeah, gray hair. The gray hair was from gr raising you. The um, <laughs> actually, I, <laughs> not the markets, but not, not the, markets. the markets. No. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but point is, look, we've been through with a lot of you. We've been through several of these. As you know, we're always proactive, not reactive in our strategy. Um, we have a pretty good idea where we're going here. You're going to hear from your advisors, just like we talked about tonight. We're going to keep reiterating the strategy, but you know, feel free to reach out to Bob and I. Uh, we're here. We're on the phones. We're talking. But uh, again, we're going to stick to our knitting. That's our strategy. And right now, we've got a great opportunity to capitalize on the way our portfolios are allocated, and we're going to we're going to be proactive about it. So, have a yeah, great I, night. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry, please. Yeah, right. I just want to say one more thing. And um, you know, this too shall pass. We don't know when, but. You know, in my in my career, I've been I've been accused of being a an eternal optimist and a very bullish optimist. And the reason is, you know, one of the reasons I've always believed in the capital markets is because of human nature. And you know, we're very adaptable <clears throat> as a race, and we always do whatever we have to do, you know, to improve our 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 situation. So as a country, you know, as a planet, as human beings, we're going to fix this. This is we're going to come out of this ahead. And things are going to be better than ever. And just like, you know, when I looked at 1987, the prices were 1600 on the Dow. I'm like, oh, my goodness, great. What would I do if 1600 on the Dow? I guarantee all of you, 10 years from now, we're going to look back and go, what was I thinking? 21000 You know, oh, my goodness, what a bargain. So, <clears throat> you know, market goes up over time. You only get these opportunities a very few times, but it really enhances your long-term return are the ones who add money, you know, when the prices are on sale. And I love a sale, not as much as my wife, but I love a sale. So, uh, you know, we'll be in touch with you. Let us know your concerns, but uh, let's stay the course and, and, you know, stay balanced so that when this thing does improve, we take advantage of the upside. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for jumping on the video call. And uh, we will be in touch very shortly. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everybody.